the building right here served for the secret service of both the Nazis and the Soviets. My name is Stefan, this is History Hustle, and I'm standing in Vilnius, Lithuania. In this video, I'm going to talk about Lithuania during the Second World War. In August 1939, the Nazis and the Soviets signed a non-aggression pact, also known as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. They would not attack each other. Also, spheres of influences were decided, and Lithuania was to be in the Soviet sphere of influence. In July 1940, the Soviets occupied Lithuania and declared the Lithuanian Socialist Soviet Republic. A year later, tens of thousands of Lithuanians were deported to Siberia. Men, women and children were deported to the Russian Far East and had to live there under horrifying circumstances where many of them would not return. But then, shortly after, the Nazis launched their attack, Operation Barbarossa. Retreating NKVD units, Soviet Union Secret Service, the predecessor of the KGB, killed countless of Lithuanian political prisoners. The most notorious was the Rene Massacre, where 70 to 80 Lithuanians were tortured to death by the NKVD. The Nazis conquered Lithuania in a week. The Nazis presented themselves as liberators but they were not. The Lithuanian wish for independence was fully ignored. Lithuania became part of Reichskommissariat Ostland. Soon after the Nazis arrived, the mass killings of the Jewish population started. The Nazis were assisted by the Lithuanians on a large scale. Why did the Lithuanians do that? Well, partially because of the already existing anti-Semitism in the country, but also because the Jews were seen as Soviet collaborators and the wounds of the Soviet atrocities were still very fresh. Most infamous were the public killings at the Litikus garage in Kaunas, where a massive pogrom started as soon as the Nazis invaded Lithuania. Jewish people were publicly beaten to death with clubs and iron canes. In Vilnius, 21,000 Jews were slaughtered by the Lithuanians. A lot of them were interned in the Vilna ghetto, where I am right now. Over the years, many would die because of diseases, starvation, and summarily executions. Those who lived were those who fled, and they joined partisans. And however, there was Lithuanian resistance against the Nazis, this was mostly passive because the main enemy was the Soviet Union. With the Baltic Offensive in 1944, the Soviets retook the Baltic states. The old occupiers were back and so was its terror. Deportations were resumed and alleged anti-Soviet elements were randomly executed. This time there was armed resistance. The so-called Forest Brothers were anti-Soviet partisans who waged a guerrilla warfare against the Soviets in the forests of the Baltics till in the 50s with some excursions in the 70s. After the death of Stalin, the regime became milder. However, the agriculture remained collectivized and criticism and religion remained banned. With Gorbachev in power in the 80s, there were more democratic reforms and this awakened the Lithuanian fire and wish for independence. In March 1990, the country declared itself independent. However, the Soviets strike back. They attacked the Vilnius TV tower, killing 14 people and wounding 10 times more. However, they did not proceed. And so, Lithuania became independent after more than 60 years. That was it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked this video. If you do, give it a like. Subscribe if you have not already. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, especially to you Lithuanians out there. I'm really curious what you thought of this video. Leave your comment down below. I'll read them all. Thanks for watching and until next time.